What's up, y'all? Welcome. Hey, welcome to this video. We're working on some bugs right now. It's going to be an offline little video. I kind of got a little bit too late in my day. I was intending on doing a live stream, but uh, I don't know. I kind of don't want to do streams too far out of my time window because I don't really want to. I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to like disturb people or make people think they got to watch if it's too late for them or too early or whatever. So I try and keep my streams about the same time. So today I'm just going to do a little offline video. Um, I'm kind of actually ripping along on a lot of um, items today. Um, most of these have been pretty easy, so it's, this is really cool. The game is finally getting to the point where things on my list are easier. They're just fixes mostly, and some of these have been just one-liners um, and done in five minutes. It's been amazing, actually. So I think I've gotten maybe ten of them already crossed off. Actually, let's see. One... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. At least thirteen things have gotten done already today. I'll tell you that. So I'm gonna work on to the next one here. Um, kind of going back and forth on this fix and create. These things in this create list are kind of like fixes as well. These are all kind of things that can kind of go into the the 1.0 release. So um, I'm gonna make the glove gate fair if you're hitting any number of them at once because the glove gate, uh, you can hit three of them. If you hit three of them, it will distribute your damage amongst them. So it makes it really difficult because the glove gate depends on how much damage you do to it, how fast you do to it, do it. So if you're hitting three or maybe even worse, like if you're hitting six of them at once, you're not gonna make much progress and the glove gate's gonna feel impossible. But if you're lucky and you happen to be standing just far enough back that your sword only hits like one of them or your sword only hits like two of them or something like that, then it's going to be easy. So got to fix that. Got to make the glove gate fair no matter how many of them you're hitting at once. So let's just go somewhere with the glove gate. I think I was in the dungeon. I was playing this last night um, and I think it was dungeon eight. Well, hey, let's, let's see. Uh, which one's fear? Yeah, it's eight. Great. Okay, so glove. Where's the where's the dungeon gate in this? That is two ten eight. Man, that is so handy having all the areas in the whole world listed and just quickly find them. All right, so do we have the glove? Yeah. All right, let's illustrate the problem, then fix it. <laughs> what? I didn't know the hyper top hat worked really well on those. See, it's super easy if you're hitting like, hitting them like that. Where did I come into this room from last night though? Oh, it was from here. Let's just clear that out. I definitely came in from this direction. Alright, so if I stand right next to it, you can sometimes get it, but still it's hard. Such a dark room. Oh, do I have the chip? The chip makes it also like twice as easy. Oh, that's it. So no chip. Okay, and starting in the next room is kind of just going to be burdensome. So let's uh, get that back to 210. Okay, there you go. That's a really good illustration. Hitting tons of them at once. Barely making any progress. I think I might have gotten one of them. Maybe not. Yeah, one of them got... It's just hard. You, your thumb gets sore. 
and you can get frustrated being like, why isn't this working? So what these need to do is take maximum damage There's a collision flag for that already, I think. Yeah, collision damage maximum. So I think we need to add a health flag. Yeah, let's just do that. Health. Oops. Take max damage. Hold on, before I start, well. Yeah, before I start building that. Um, no, let's just go with it. I think, ah. I should really test this, look at the system first. I mean, okay, here's where it, where it goes and um, distributes damage. Yeah, I think this is going to work. So it's looping, looping through all the availables. And if the, if the entity that's dealing damage has damage max, it does this damage equals original available. We're also going to say, or, the entity being hurt I mean, obviously it needs to have a health component if this is even going to work, so we can just use entity get health component um, id health continue. So basically this whole loop will just fail or continue if that entity does not have a health component, so we can guarantee that. If health the flags has k health take max damage or the entity is dealing max damage then the damage is always original available now we need constants hook this up as a word that can be parsed and lastly add it to the glove gate And then test it out. Nice. That's back how it should be. Okay, let's confirm that we can't we should it should be difficult to, to get past this gate if we don't have the glove. Oh, still can get past it. it. Might be because, yeah, it might be because I always base those original calculations on um, on having mul hitting multiple them at, multiple of them at once. So. Let's do a recharge duration. It's a little faster. This is going to be really tweaky. Like, I mean, tweaking this number here will make a big difference. So, let's start with let's start with the fire ratio. 
instead of instead of one whole second, we're gonna do 0.62 seconds for that for this entity to recharge its health. Let's see if we can. The whole point is that it should recharge its health before the slower sword attack should be able to kill it. Yeah, see, I'm like making no progress here. What if I have to use it with the type of hopper top hat? Even the hyper top hat can't get past it. That's cool. That's good. Um, now let's see if it works with the glove. That would be great if it's just a lucky guess with that whole 0.62. Yeah, see, I still can't get it here with the, with the glove. Charging too fast. Okay, so um, we need to change that to let's get up to 0 Wow. So we're just a we're just a hair under where it was. back hmm <sighs> okay that is like super touchy I mean does it make much difference if a recharge duration is like that I'm kind of working for it. So I can do it. Well, hyper, hyper top bat just kills it real fast, though. Well, not every time. Okay. Hmm. This might be close right here. See what we got now with no glove. What if we lower the invincible duration if the glove can have more impact that way? Oh, <laughs> 
Mm. Oh, wait. Oh. You know what has a lot to do with it is this. It's total hit points. Because the sword does one damage. So hitting it twice, you should be able to kill it. All oh, right, the recharge duration is how fast it recharges all of its health. Which means that this needs to be just barely, barely, the, right there, the recharge duration needs to be barely the duration that the player should be able to do this much damage. So, um, I think the, the, um, the glove gives you an attack Let's look at that. Use sword has, I think it's 0.2 seconds. Yeah, so the cooldown starts at 0.6 when you have no, um, no glove. But then if you're comboing it, if you're doing combo attacks and you're back to back successful hits, then you can get down to 0.5. Okay, so about 0.5 or the glove. Does no wait combo can be zero, one, or two. Okay, so wait, no, you can get down to point four, but I'd say an average about point five. And then, yeah, and then the, the glove you can get down to point two, but your average is more like point two five. So we got really a difference of point two five seconds per attack with the glove and. 0.5 seconds without. So the recharge duration needs to be if, okay, so if there's, we have the glove, the sword's doing one damage. Let's keep this really simple. Say it takes three hits to kill it. Got to get all those. If you're getting it in, in 0.25 seconds each, and that's 0.75 seconds total on the recharge duration. Saying recharge duration. Yeah, it's just recharge duration over max health. This 
This shouldn't add to the invincible timer. It does. It adds to the invincible timer. No wonder. It's he every time it heals itself, it adds to its invincible duration. So it's, in it's this is so. Oops. No wonder. This is really really touchy and weird. It's because of that. Okay. Okay, now I guess it needs a faster recharge. I guess that could be 0.4. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. If it, its recharge duration is 0.75, oh shit, let's just take it down anyways. Oh, right, it needs, right. No? So put that back. Okay, when we reset the invincibility here, it needs to be only if it had invincibility.
Hyper top, I was almost able to do it now. Okay, glove. I think we're on the right track here. That felt better. Okay, but it still can't get it with the uh, glove. Yeah, I'm barely able to get it. Okay, so it recharges its entire health in 0.7 seconds. Obviously needs to be slower. Felt like a lot slower, but let's try 0.5. It still does not appear that we're ever getting below. Yeah, it just recharges way faster than... Yes, okay, it recharges its entire health, which is, in this case, 12 hit points, um, in 0.5 seconds, which means that it can recharge an entire one or, f or four hit points, basically. Um... Four hit points can be done, or one hit point, whatever you want to think of it, in a third of 0.5. So, yeah, it recharges that health that you just, lo oh, okay. So we need to be able to have the recharge duration slow enough that, so if, uh, if we want to be able to do to make any progress, then we need a point every point two five seconds. Why do the math if you can just guess? Feel it out. Sometimes it's faster to just feel it out. <laughs> Did I do that the wrong way? Oh, yeah. So 1.0 recharging 0.3 seconds. Um, almost making progress, but yeah, that, that was hard. Let's do 1.2 seconds now. Now this thing's starting to get more deterministic. This is very good. Yeah, there we go. We just hit it a few times. It's gone. That's cool. This feels about right. Yeah, I was even kind of trying to be slow there and it worked still. Okay, now remove the glove. Yeah, remove the glove, can't do it. Top hat can do it, cool. I want the hyper top hat to be able to do it if it can. But I don't want the sword without the glove to be able to do this at all. And it looks like we're good. Yes, this is so much better. Okay, I need to check a few things before I commit this. One, I need to make sure that anything that has a recharge duration now still functions as it should. And there's really only a couple things in the whole game that use recharge duration. One of them is the light pillars. Let's go to a light pillar. And make sure it still kind of behaves as it did. I think this should because it had a much slower recharge duration. Yeah, cool. I can still kill these as a player, but if I let it go, it'll recharge back. 
yeah, because yeah, this didn't this didn't really matter that it was setting its invincible timer every time it ticked that because it was just recharging so slowly it didn't make a difference. But the glove gate had to recharge at such a faster pace that it just made such a huge difference. That invincible timer thing being a, a problem. So that's good. I want to make sure there's no other obvious things that are using recharge duration that I can test. So the glove gate, Smith. Right, Smith just gains his health back. Oh yeah, and he has a lot of hit points. Okay, Smith, that's fine. Smith just has that. Smith worker, Smith worker, Smith worker, Smith worker. Great. What else do we got here for entities? Um, a bush recharges itself in a half second. All right, we need to make sure bushes are still the same. And what would I have? No glove? I don't know. This really is a bug fix because this is a frustration as a player. You don't want to be frustrated and be like, ah, oh, I can't get past those glove gates. So I'm really glad to have this done. Yeah, these are just recharging there. Very good point. Really rather fast. Listen to the sound. Fire top hat though. Fire top hat is devastating to trees and bushes. That's a that's a, it's kind of OP actually. If you're playing Songbringer and you want to just find all the secrets, get the fire top hat and then throw it. Well, you need the fire top hat and the extend top hat, the, the hyper top hat, and just throw it. And then like this is how you do it. You just throw it and then go somewhere else. Blink if possible. just fine. The rate at which the healing is cool. What else do we have here? Tiny bush. Tree. Just tested those. Light pillar. Already tested that. What's this one? Oh, sconce. Sconces are an instant recharge. Doesn't matter that there's a recharge duration. Alright. Eight light pillar, and this should probably be the other light. Eight sconce, yeah. Okay, good. We're all good. This is a nice, nice edit. Um, now to do a recode review here, just to make sure. So change the glove gate's hit points total. Gave it a recharge duration that's been tweaked a little bit. It takes max damage. Oh, the max damage should be checked. Is there something, some way I can check that? Yeah, I guess if I could go, I can go fight um, some enemies aboard the ship. No. I have a glove. No glove. No. If I just hit a bunch of pillars, better if I find some pillars all piled together. called 
rock pile. Nice. If I hit one of them in a corner... I should be able to kill it a lot faster than hitting a bunch of them once. Yeah, okay good. Yep, good, good. Just confirming that the existing behavior works as it did. But this is distributing damage across a bunch of different enemies here, so that's why it's taking me a lot longer. But, if I were to stand right here at the corner and just hit that one, it would go a lot faster. Right. Okay, confirmed. Now let's get back to this code review. So, attack system, distribute damage, checks for the health flags, health take, da take max damage. And fix the, uh, the way recharges work. So it doesn't set an invincible timer whenever it's healing, it's recharge. So, very good. Like it. Let's call this one done. And this is really a fix. Let's call this fix, um, fix frustrations, clearing glove gates. All right, what next, what next? I'm gonna try reducing the number of dark rooms. If I, I wanna see if I can reduce the number of dark rooms per dungeon without changing any data, without changing any of the worlds. Because there's just like too many dark rooms. So let me see if I can do this completely unobtrusively. It's kind of a frustration as well as a player. You're like, man, there's so many dark rooms, can't really see much. Part of the, you know, some dark rooms is cool, but too many dark rooms and it becomes a frustration. Okay, we got a number of dark rooms. All right, it does the dungeon generate. So this is dungeon. Add dark rooms, here we go. Now, can I change any of this without changing the whole world? Let's first get um, the log opened. Let me get a little copy of it. So we can look at the, look at the whole world after this is done, just to confirm visually that the world shape, none of the dungeons have changed. So all it does is loop through, it counts up number of dark rooms. I think I could totally just, I don't think it changes the world at all. But does it affect the world itself?
Okay, so it doesn't create light beams. That's totally just visual. Ah, uh, it doesn't create light sconces. That's fine. It just doesn't... Wouldn't have sconces. Lamps, same kind of thing. Doesn't add any lamps. So it would change the a certain area slightly, but it's really not going to make much of a difference. It's definitely not going to change the world. Okay, that's going to be the same. Uh, a second, I just had a thought about that previous commit. Did I? Oh, yeah, I added constants. Okay, so there it's adding the dark. What's this? Oh, this is showing that it's dark. This just reduces the whole overall light. This clears. What is this? Add tease pattern. Oh, teases and they're never dark, I guess. That's confirmation right there that you can change it. Right? Oh, and it's the lightness. Okay, I think it technically it would be possible to just change all the data. But I don't want to do that at this point. I kind of want Sombrier to just be the way it is. All the data stays the same. All no 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 significant gameplay changes here. Only only frustrational fixes or things like that. As long as they don't change existing gameplay. So to world, we got number of dark rooms. One one. So that's good. But Hark, oh, one through nine, no wonder there's so many dark rooms. In my latest playthroughs, I've really noticed this, like, what the heck? Why are there so many dark rooms? Psychedelic, that's fine, two of them. Four, that's okay. Fire, one through nine, yeah. So if you're at dungeon seven, there's going to be seven dark rooms. That's, that's just too many. Like, I could see three or four dark rooms being possible. Okay, let's just clamp it. So here we're clamping it from 0 to 64. Let's just clamp it to 0 to 3. So one, two, or three dark rooms are possible in each dungeon. Even just having one dark room would probably be cool. Two dark rooms is also pretty reasonable. Three, I don't know, two or three. Still going to be a hell of a lot less than like seven or nine of them. Yeah, we'll keep it at three. Because you're, sometimes you're not going to explore an entire dungeon. And that's only for high... Oh. It'd probably be better, though, if I did this. If I took that percentage... And multiply it by a half. No, we don't want to do that for the. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we don't want to do that. We just want to clamp it. Okay, I think that's going to be a lot more reasonable. I'm still. Ah, should I make it two? No, let's not change it too much. Okay, going back to that area then. 
let's see if that area is dark that we were doing the uh, this one, the glove gate at. Okay, I'm I'm reassured knowing this is not um not gonna affect the world. Well, let's, I need to double check. Okay, so this one's definitely still dark. This one right next to is dark too. Where is it? Oh, it just doesn't have any light. Yeah, this is already a dark dungeon. Okay, I like it. Oh yeah, just make one one check here. Let's make sure this doesn't change anything. No dungeon layouts have changed. I know the set this is it's probably a pointless task here. But let's just confirm. Make sure the overworld's still the same shape, of course. None of that was changed. Okay, goal, yep, yep, three. Mm hmm You can see it had two dark rooms and now it still has two dark rooms there. Here. Park. Park. Sweet engine. This one didn't have this one had one dark room there. It still has that one dark room. Or two dark rooms. Yeah, two dark rooms. This one had one, two, three. And it got rid of one of them. This one had one. I think that one's clamped already. We already had a small number. Fire, this is the one we're talking about. Fire was the one I played last night, the same world, and it just had freaking too many. Where's one, two, three, four, five, six? Look at that, it's a huge cluster of darkness. There's still two of them over here. But from six down to three, wait, oh, this is another one, there's one. Two, three, four, five, six. Oh. Yeah, okay. So now this it went from six to three. It's half the dark rooms. I, I kind of think I should do, I should pull it down to just two of them. Two dark rooms per dungeon is, is, a, is still enough. Even one per, per dungeon would be okay. Let's run that again. Take a look at fire. Yeah, so there's that those six six, yeah. And now there's only two. Good. That's better. Ah, it's kind of a relief, man. Some of these dark rooms are just like just way too prevalent. There's one, two, three. Four, five, there's at least <laughs> cat fight. <laughs> Calm down, you guys. Seriously, you're gonna hurt yourselves.
And now we got one. Two. In an already really dark dungeon, which is fine. In the ship. Ship must add smaller numbers too, because I'm not seeing any. Alright, very, very small change. But it's a, it's a very small code change, but a very significant change to the player. Yeah. Okay, what next? Let's do this one real quick. The Steam launch uses the wrong monitor. That's a really fast one because I know exactly what to do. I don't even really need it. I don't want to check it right now. I just want to check it later. Kids services, Win32. It first gets its um, Numeray monitor, there we go, it sets up its screen size and it goes, okay, do I have more than one screen? If so, then get the monitor wrecked and that's what screen width and screen height to use. Oh, it's just when it goes and adjusts the borderless window, it tries to get, oh, it gets its monitor wrecked again. Hmm. Actually, I kind of will need to check this. So I'll set up the code and then I'll be done with the stream because I got to go test this on a different t television. I got to hook up my computer and like make sure I do this right. Basically, what I'm doing here is um, I'm using a technique where you de to determine which which monitor to put the game on. I'm using the current mouse position. I think it's one of the simple a simple way to just determine which monitor the game should be on. So what, what cursor is, where is your cursor at? Because it doesn't quite work with your window. If your window is launched, um, sometimes your window can be launched via like Steam or even via Visual Studio and it, it somehow puts your window on a different monitor or like the main monitor or whatever. But if, if it just determined wherever the, cur the player's cursor is at is that current monitor and then use that for your, for your, um, for setting your, your window position and your window size and all that, then it's going to be a lot more rock solid. So, so we don't need the get monitor rect function anymore. We're going to just set we're going to set some screen screen x equals zero and screen y equals zero. We got screen width, screen height. 
get monitor rect is only going to be from the monitor point. Yeah, we can just keep this function as it is though, because we can just go the screen width, screen pop. Let's just make sure this gets zeroed. Super pragmatic here, but screen x equals screen y equals zero. And here, if we have two monitors or more, then screen x equals r dot left, and screen y equals r dot um, top. And then when we adjust the borderless window, we don't need to keep get the monitor size every time. We just always use screen X, screen Y, screen width, screen height. There. Okay, I need to go test this. But that's how simple it should be. Oh yeah, I can't even build it. Because of that. This is not Windows. Okay, well, I hope you had a good time watching this. Hope you're learning something or this inspires you or something. Um, that's going to be it for today's stream or video. Whatever the heck you call this thing. Hope y'all um, hope y'all have a good time uh, watching E3 or being at E3 next week too. I'm kind of excited for that. So that's going to be cool. Um, yeah. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching.